Hi, this is Ben Tupper. The Circular Train Puzzle. You are in a circular train composed of connected cars. From the car you stand in, you can walk to the next train car on either side. Because it's a circle, if you walk far enough, you will eventually return to the car you started in. Each car has a light that you can turn on or off. The starting setting for all the lights in all the cars has been set randomly. So the puzzle is, what is the best method for figuring out how many cars are in the train? Before you pause and think, a few restrictions and assumptions. First, marking a train car in any way is prohibited. This means no smashing in windows or marking doors. Come on people, this isn't New York in the 80s. Also, let us assume that the light from a car is visible only from that car. There are just two actions you can take. You can turn on or off a light, and you can walk between cars. So one more time, what is the best method for figuring out how many cars are in the train? Pause and think, and come back when you're ready for an answer. Note, you may need more than five seconds for this one. My wife wants me to point out that I've been known to stop dinner parties with this puzzle. Are you ready for the answer? To answer this question, I'll split it into two parts. How do you figure out the train's length? And how do you figure out the train's length efficiently? First, let's look at how to solve the problem at all. You may have figured out that you can't solve this puzzle by walking in just one direction. Even if you keep track of the lights you see, and you notice a repeating pattern, you can't know for sure that you've discovered a circle. How do you know you're not just in a much longer train with repeating pattern of lights? The pattern you witness would be exactly the same. The only way to check for sure is to retrace your steps or backtrack. Let's describe a backtracking procedure called check n. This algorithm checks if the train has n or fewer train cars. 1. In your starting car, turn on the light if the light is off, or leave the light on if it's already on. 2. In one direction, walk through n more cars. Make sure the lights are on in each of them. 3. When you reach car number n, turn the light off, or leave it off if it's already off. Finally, 4. Turn around and walk back in the direction from whence you came. For example, here's what happens when you apply check N to a train with more than N cars. Let's try check 4 on an 8-car train. Up top here is a bird's eye view of the train, and below is a different visualization of the same train, just linear, as one might experience it walking through the cars. I'll mark the corresponding starting car with a red line in each diagram for our convenience. First, make sure the light is on in your starting car. We start counting from our next car, so I'll mark this car as zero just so we remember. Count out four more train cars, turning on the light in each one. If the light's already on, just leave it on. When you reach the fourth train car, turn off the light. Now. Count again as you return to your starting car. Nothing strange here. Not surprisingly, all the lights you turned on are still on. Now look what happens when you apply check N to a train with N or fewer cars. Let's try check 9 on an 8-car train. Count out 9 cars, turning on the light in every one as you go. After nine cars, you've snaked back around past where you started, although you don't know it yet. But now, when you turn off the light and return home, you've turned off a light in a car that you'll visit on your return trip. When you head back towards your starting car, you mysteriously find a light off where you thought you had left it on. 
This is your aha moment. This must be the same car whose light you turned off right before turning around. Now you can figure out how long the train is by counting the cars you passed since turning around. The check n algorithm helps you find the length of a train if that length is n or less. But if the train has more than n cars, we simply learn that the train has more than n cars. And we have to do our check all over again, this time with a larger n. So what value should we choose for n? And then what if that's not high enough? A naive method would be to check 1, 2, 3, until we found the length of the train. This will give you the answer, but not very efficiently. As the train's length gets longer, the number of steps required for this method grows exponentially. Look how long it takes to solve for a train of 8 cars. First, you do check 1, which takes 2 steps. Light on, one step right, light off, step left. Then check two, that's four steps. Next is check three, that's six steps, and so on. After check eight, you return to the first car and find the light off. Done. In the end, it takes 72 steps to solve for a train of 8 cars. Is that good or is that bad? It's hard to tell. Let's look at how this method performs on a train of arbitrary length. Here's a graph plotting the number of steps required under this method to solve the puzzle for a given train against the number of cars on that train. A 20-car train would require about 400 steps and a 40-car train would require over 1,600 steps. Since a doubling in the number of cars translates to about a quadrupling in the number of steps required, computer scientists would say this function has the order of n squared. Not great. A more efficient method is as follows. Try check 1, then check 2, then check 4, then check 8, continuing to double the amount of cars you check until you find the train's length. Let's use this procedure on an 8-car train. First you do check 1, then check 2, check 4, and finally check 8. It takes a total of 30 steps. Here's a graph of this more efficient method in green. A 20-car train requires about 100 steps, and a 40-car train requires about 250 steps. Better on both counts. More importantly, this is a linear time algorithm, meaning a doubling in the number of cars translates to a doubling in the number of steps required. Computer scientists would say it has the order of n, much better than n squared. So there you have it, an efficient linear time solution to the circular train puzzle. P.S. Can we do better? I'm glad you asked. Although I've just showed you the best solution I've found online, I believe there is still room for improvement. I propose that the following algorithm is better still. It builds on the power of two method, but with a slight twist. Start by stepping one to the right, then two to the left, then four to the right, then eight to the left, increasing in powers of two. As before, turn on every light as you go. And as before, turn off a car's light whenever you turn around. Continue this until you surpass the length of the train. As before, you'll crack this puzzle when you find a car whose light is unexpectedly off. Let me show you what I mean. Since you've seen how the lights work, I won't illustrate the lights here, but simply describe the direction of the steps. Start with one step to the right, then take two steps left, then four steps right, eight steps left, and so on and so forth. Our check n algorithm is still in here, just hiding in the overlaps. Here's check four, and here's check eight. The speed of this method is still linear, but its slope is shallower. 
Here's how our three methods compare in performance. The first method, in which you increment the check function by 1, is the worst, with an order of n squared. Unlike the other two, the equation for its runtime is the same for any size train. The second method is much better. It's linear. It has a best case equation because when the train's length is a power of 2, it solves the problem quickly. The worst case equation is for when the train's length is one more than a power of 2. Finally, I offer my solution, which is still linear, but better. It has smaller coefficients for both best and worst case runtimes. Here are all the algorithms plotted together. Can you come up with a better method? I suspect it may be possible to optimize this third method even further, and I think the key would be using statistics and probability, but I'll leave that to the eager beaver viewer. I'll be in the dining car.